Hey class, today we're gonna to figure out what kind of surface you wanna paint on. So I'm gonna give you a few options. You're gonna get shipped um, a package of supplies and you will get five canvases. They're gonna, I think they're about this size, pre-stretched gesso canvases. So you won't have to deal with a mess in your home studio with gessoing anything. So this is your sort of default option for this class. Oh my bad, I lied to you already. You're going to be getting five canvas panels, not canvas, stretched canvases. Um, so I prefer painting uh, typically on canvas, um, and I usually pick a medium weight canvas. So canvas, when you go to like, like art supply stores, either sold in, or if you're ordering things online, sold in canvas blankets uh, or rolls. Um, and I tend to usually buy the big ones on the rolls. And I, I pick the width depending on how large my canvas is. So this is a, a little uh, segment of a medium weight canvas, and that's sort of my favorite. Um, you can also buy a lightweight canvas if you're doing something really large, um, and the, the style of painting you're gonna do can handle a lightweight canvas, but I prefer to do a medium weight canvas. They also sell heavyweight canvas, but I find this is really hard to stretch, and it's usually total overkill. Um, if you feel like spending a lot of money and want to go real upscale, you can also paint on linen. I have painted on linen before, but it's so expensive. But it has a really fine weave, um, and it's got a beautiful surface. Other things you might consider are painting on paper. Um, so for my classes, I usually recommend Bristol paper because it's a mixed media paper. You can do a lot of things on that, um, and you can coat it with gesso and paint on that. Um, in my own studio, though, I tend to prefer getting rolls of a nicer paper called Strathmore. So I'll order, um, sort of, no, this was a larger roll, but a roll of Strathmore paper like that. And then I can unroll it and cut it to size. I forgot to tell you, you could also get a pad of canvas paper. That's another option. Um, in terms of preparing your canvas, so oftentimes I will stretch and gesso this on a canvas. Sometimes I'll just pin it on the wall and uh, gesso it and use it as a canvas blanket. Um, but even before I do that, you know, a lot of times I'll iron out the wrinkles that come in it. And sometimes I'll pre-wash it if I want to have sort of a distressed um, look to it. I'm going to show you a couple more examples. But first of all, I'm at the station here. Um, gesso comes in a lot of different Typically, the default one is a white acrylic gesso. This is an absorbent ground that you're using to prepare for either acrylic or oil painting. Um, it also comes in black. You can get it in like a bisque color. Um, and I, a lot of times I like to use a clear gesso, and I'll, I'll show you some applications for this in a minute. But um, especially if you're painting on fabric, you want to leave that pattern behind or other surface that you want it to show through. So yes, you can also order canvas stretchers or pre-stretched canvases from an art supply store. That may be fine when you're working on a smaller scale, but it's, um, and I, you know, some of the other benefits of this is, is if you're gonna frame something, having a really um, shallow depth is gonna make it more affordable for framing. But it starts to get really expensive to get things from a store that are already pre-made. So I usually work with a carpenter to hire, hire someone to build um, the canvas stretchers and then I stretch them myself. So I'm gonna grab one that's not painted on. So, you know, this is a, a larger size one. Uh, my preference is to get ones that are about two inches deep or 1.75 inches deep um, in terms of the depth of the canvas. And I usually don't frame them. So one of the reasons I pick the deeper canvas is I think it looks really nice as an object on the wall without it being that saves some money, it's also an aesthetic choice. Um, as you, if you're starting to paint larger, which you're probably not in your home studio right now, but if you have the space, anytime you go past 24 inches um, in length, you're really gonna wanna put a crossbar on there. So yes, they sell ones already with crossbars at art supply stores, and then I have a carpenter build these for me, just so if you can see this, it has a cross brace, and it has triangle corners there. Um, and this is really gonna prevent warping, so. Later, I will show you how to stretch and gesso a canvas, but I just want to give you a heads up on some options. And then the piece I have in the background, obviously, that's really large. It would be very expensive to buy that pre-made, so I can you know, stretch it myself. Okay, I'm going to take you to 
other side of my studio to show you a couple of other options. And then we'll come back and I'll show you how to just. So sometimes when I'm painting, I may want to use a lot of texture or um, if I'm putting a varnish on something, there may be a reason why you want to buy a pre-made or have somebody make you a panel to paint on. Um, so canvas, of course, has a lot of flexibility, which it could be fine. But anytime that you're having kind of this, this particular piece has a lot of texture on it and then I put a resin on the top of it, that sort of surface would crack if that was going to be on a canvas. So this was a reason why I chose um, to paint on a wood panel. And also the way that paint behaves on a wood panel may be different and that may be something that you want to look at. So that's, you know, another option is painting on a wood panel. So I was telling you earlier about using Strathmore paper. So one of the nice things about that is this almost looks, the edge of this almost looks like it's a print, right? So I taped the edges of that and as I was painting this and afterwards I peeled those off and you cut, it gives, gives it a nice, um, nice border. This was one where I, you know, coated it with gesso and used acrylic on the piece. So this was one where I chose to just, I was thinking I'd take, I was doing it at a residency and I was going to take it home and stretch it later, but I ended up just liking it on an unstretched canvas. You can also put grommets in the corners of an unstretched canvas and, and hang it that way as a canvas blanket. Uh, but this one I intentionally left kind of, you know, a messy edge like that, and I was trying to mimic sort of the way you would work with watercolors. So that's just a piece of canvas with some gesso in the background and then painting that with acrylic. So you can use acrylic paints directly on fabric, but they may not always um, absorb into the surface or sit on the surface the way you want. I think on this one, I probably just painted directly on the, on the, the fabric. Um, this is a big sort of canvas blanket piece. All right, so here I'm just sort of painting directly on that. Um, but you can see here, like, it didn't absorb quite right there, but I, I wanted it to be like that. All right, so I'm going to show you a piece called Hanagasa. I'll put an image up here so you can see the whole thing. But this was, you know, a large piece where I used textiles and I sewed together different surfaces, different, and this center panel is canvas. Um, but what I'm gonna show you here is the difference between the way that acrylic paint will behave when you gesso it versus ungessoed. So in the background here, you can see where you can see it's sort of bleeding through quite a bit. Um, that, I, just touching the surface of here, it looks like I probably just put the pigments on as a wash in the background. But this area here where there's a chain link fence and the center area here where there's this giant hat, I put down a layer, probably here I did clear gesso and I might have either done white gesso or clear gesso in the background there and that gave it an absorbent ground so that the pigment could be fully saturated and sort of behave in a way that I wanted it to there. So that's another example of, you know, painting on fabric, painting on canvas that is unstretched and some other options. Earlier I showed you kind of a small panel piece. Um, artboard makes a really nice surface that you can buy ahead of time to paint on. Um, but I've also sometimes ordered custom-made um, panels to paint on. So obviously this is, I think this is like 36 by 36. Really large, <laughs> it's a really heavy piece. Um, but the back side of it here is a wood panel um, that you can paint on. So this is, I think this is really nice for oil painting. This particular one was obviously the street sign, so conceptually I thought it made sense to paint on the panel. Um, and then on this one I chose to keep the edges nice and clean, um, so you could see that. So that's also something to think about, do you want to gesso your edges or not? And after you, if you choose to gesso them, do you want to tape them so they stay clean, or do you want the paint spilling off the side? There's no one right answer, again those are um, aesthetic choices that you can make. But you, you do want to think uh, dimensionally, um, not just about the surface image. All right, so I'm going to show you how to gesso. So when you first purchase gesso, you're going to probably open up your container and you may see sort of a layer of um, polymer that got separated away from the um, gesso ground. So you really want to make sure, first of all, to stir it up. I'm opening up one that's pretty old right now. Um, different brands of gesso will have different thicknesses. 
Um, I usually don't recommend adding water to your gesso because that's going to start to break that down. We always have mechanical adhesion or chemical adhesion, um, and as soon as you start to put water into the gesso, again, it's going to start to you know, chemically break, break that surface down, and we want to have this be archi archival. That said, sometimes it's far too thick, um, and you do need to actually thin it out a little bit. Uh, ideally, you would put, add a polymer to that to thin that out. Um, so this one's really thick, um, and I'm not going to be scared about putting too much on initially. that out. See, I'm loading up my brush quite a bit. I'm going to do a total of three layers of gesso and um, I'm going to alternate the way that I put the gesso down. So for this first layer I'm just pushing it in one direction. Trying to get all, all the lumps. I opened up a really old container, so there's like some kind of goopy lumps in there that I'm gonna have to pick out. Um, after it dries, I can also sand it. It should be a no-brainer, but pay attention to the surface that you're working on and put a piece of plastic, cardboard, something down there that you don't mind getting messy. So you want to have enough gesso there so it coats the surface and absorbs into it, and then you want to get rid of any lumps. Because I opened up a really old container, I have some goopy things in here that I'm just going to pull out that might have to do. More often than not, even if you're working with something new, you may have a cheap brush and so the hairs of the brush might get stuck in there and you have to pick those out. But you can do that while it's still wet. I'm going to run my brush again across that to get those wet parts out. So gesso sometimes can dry as quickly as 30 minutes. It may take an hour or even more. It really depends on the humidity and temperature. So I'm just going to leave that be. So you can't just leave your brush sitting around like this. Because just like the gesso is going to dry on your canvas or your paper, it'll dry and ruin your brush. So it sometimes can be a pain to have to wash your brush out every single time in between putting layers of gesso on. So one um, thing you can do is just wrap it in plastic if you think you're not going to be gone too long and then come back and use it again. If you're gonna be gone for several hours or even like a day or two and you didn't, you're too lazy to wash your brushes out, you can also put it in a plastic bag and throw it in the freezer, so that's the other thing. Or you could just put it inside of um, a cup or a bucket of water um, just so that it doesn't dry up. But make sure to take care of your brushes. Of course, when you're totally done, you need to wash this thoroughly out um, and dry it off. Right, so we're going to wait till this dries to come back and put a second layer on. When we put the second layer, remember this way I was going this way, the second layer is going to go the next direction in a, to kind of create a basket weave, and then the third layer will go this direction again. Again, I can sand at the final version, or if I see lumps in the meantime, I can sand in between.